Hello, creative friends. This is Patricia from patriciafenty.com, and today I have a tutorial on how to crochet these super funky leg warmers. I've been wanting to make these for a long time because I like to wear them, and so I'm using this really funky yarn, and this is super easy to do. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually very easy. We have these little cuffs at the bottom and then we're going to fan it out so it can fit around the calf and then there's cuffs at the top. So these are super fun. Let's get started. Now I'm using the Bernat Wavelength yarn. The color is Sunset Solitude. It's a number five bulky yarn, 100% acrylic, five ounces or 140 grams, 223 yards or 204 meters. Now you can use a number four medium weight yarn if you like, but you will need more yarn than this, maybe 260 or 270 yards. And then of course, you'd want to use the corresponding crochet hook for that. Uh, here for this one, I'm using a five and a half millimeter or I8 crochet hook. You'll need some scissors and a darning needle. Now we're going to start by making the cuff around the bottom part of the leg warmer. And to get this measurement, you want to measure around the widest part of your calf and then subtract three inches. So for me, my calf was 14 inches, so minus three inches. So I'm going to make my band 11 inches. So yours will be different than that, or you can just make it according to my pattern size. So we'll start the cuff by doing a slip knot and leaving a fairly long tail. And if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series that shows you everything you need to know. So with your tail to the right, you'll put the loop on your hook and you'll yarn over and pull that through the loop. And that's a chain one. Yarn over, pull through the loop, chain two, chain three, chain four. So the width of my band is four chains. If you're using a lighter weight yarn, you may need this to be five or six chains and you want the length to be about an inch. So for this, we're doing four because it's a chunky yarn. So then you chain one for your turning chain. Now you'll do a single crochet into the top loop of the next stitch, not the turning chain. Go under the top loop yarn over, pull the yarn through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then going into the top loop of the next stitch, you'll pull your yarn through and do another single crochet. So yarn over and through the two loops. And so you'll single crochet all the way back along this chain. So you'll have four single crochets or whatever, however many your beginning chain was before the turning chain. Then you'll chain one and turn your work. And then not going into the turning chain, but into the first stitch, into the top loop, you'll do a single crochet. And you'll single crochet into the top loop of each stitch. And you'll have four single crochets at the end of this row. And then a chain one to turn your work. And you'll just repeat that all the way along until you have your band to the to your desired length. For me, that's 11 inches. So I'll see you there. All right. So my cuff is 11 inches in length and it's a total of 32 rows. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join the cuff to make it into a circle. So just bring your uh, left side over to the right side so that side is facing you and your hook is away from you and then you can do a slip stitch just picking up two loops under that first stitch yarn over pull the loop through those two stitches and through the loop on your hook and that's joining the cuff with a slip stitch and then later on you can use this tail to stitch the cuff closed here so now we're going to start working on the body of the leg warmers so chain two, and this counts as your first double crochet. 
And so what you have with a cuff is you have uh, these peaks and valleys. And we're going to do one double crochet into each peak and each valley because you don't really have stitches to work into because you're crocheting into the end of the rows. So we've joined on at a peak. So we'll do a double crochet into the valley. So yarn over and just pick up a stitch there at the end of the row, pull your yarn through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's a double crochet. Now you have the peak here and you're going to yarn over and just find a stitch at the end of that row, just going under one stitch only. And then you can do a double crochet into the end of that peak. And now we have a valley. So you're going to do a double crochet into one loop of that valley and do your double crochet. So you'll just do a double crochet into each peak and each valley. And, the, and at the end of this round, you should have the same number of double crochets that you had for your rows. So I have 32 rows and I'll have 32 double crochets. So here we are at the end of round one and I've done my 31st double crochet, or sorry, my 32nd. So then going into the second chain of the beginning chain two, you can do a slip stitch and I like to pick up two stitches of that chain and slip stitch into there. And that's the end of round one. So for round two, you're going to chain two. Then you'll do a double crochet into the top loop of, of each stitch all the way around. So just go into the first stitch there and then double crochet into the top loop of the next stitch. And you're just going to do that double crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way around. And you will have 32 double crochets at the end of this row or however many rows you started with for the band. So I'll see you there. So coming to the end of round two, this is my 32nd double crochet and this may look like a stitch to go into but it's not but if and if you're counting your stitches you'll have your 32 double crochets and you join this round by going into the second chain of that beginning chain two with a slip stitch now for round three to round seven you'll just repeat round two so chain two and do one double crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way around until you have seven rounds all together. Now, if you have fairly long legs, you may wanna do eight rounds, or if you want it more slouchy, you can do eight or nine rounds. But once you get up to the height that you want, we, we're going to start widening the leg warmers to fit around the calf. So there you go, carry on to round seven and I will see you there. Welcome back. So I've just come to the end of round seven and we're going to start to add some stitches to make the calf section of the leg warmers a little wider. Again, if your legs are longer, you may wanna go around another round or two and you can see how nicely that's crocheting up. It's a simple pattern, but very nice. And of course, if you're making this in a different size, you're going to probably need more yarn um, than what I'm using here because this ball ended up being just the right amount for this size of leg warmer. So join with a slip stitch and you're going to do a chain two and you do a double crochet into the top loop of the first stitch and then two double crochets into the top loop of the next stitch. So that's an increase of one stitch for this side here and then continue with a double crochet into the top loop of each stitch. Oops, what do I have here? Yeah, so double crochet in the top loop of each stitch 
until you get to the third to last stitch of this round and I'll see you there. Now coming to the end of round eight, I have three stitches left. So into the third stitch before the end of this round, I'll do two double crochets into that same stitch. So this is increasing this round by two stitches. So for me, instead of 32 double crochets, I'll now have 34 double crochets. So then do a double crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet into the last stitch and join this round with a slip stitch as before. For round nine, we're going to continue to increase. So do your chain two and then do a double crochet into the next two stitches this time, just so we're offsetting the increase a little bit. And then into this fourth stitch or third stitch, we'll increase with two double crochets into that next stitch on this side. And then you're going to continue to crochet all the way around doing a double crochet into the top loop of each stitch until you get to the fourth to last stitch from the end of that round. So I'll see you there. Now coming to the end of round nine, I have four stitches left. So I'm going to do an increase stitch into that fourth to last stitch. So that's two double crochets into that same stitch into the top loop and then a double crochet into each of the last three stitches of this round and always working into that top loop. So now I have 36 double crochets all the way around and join this round with a slip stitch as before. So at this point, you can rows with increased stitches as frequently as you like in order to get the leg warmer to fit your calf comfortably. For me, what I did was I just did rows eight and nine with an increase at the beginning of the end. So that's left me with 36 double crochets. So then round 10, I just did a row of double crochets. And then for round 11, I realized I had to increase a bit more. So I increased at the end of row 11 and increased at the beginning of row 12. So you can kind of custom fit it as you need to. Um, so for round 13, 14 and 15, I just did 38 double crochets all the way around without increasing. And for the very last round, we're going to do a decrease stitch just to bring the top in a little bit. So carry on, increase as you need to. I will also have the written directions for this exact pattern in the blog post below. So carry on until you get the leg warmers to the height and the width that you like and then I'll show you how we'll do the very last round and the cuff. Welcome back. So I completed round 15 and join my round as before. Now for round 16 or whatever your final round would be, depending on how many you decide to do, we're going to do a decrease for this round. So chain two, that's your first double crochet and do a double crochet into the first stitch. And then we're going to do a double crochet two together stitch. So yarn over go into the next stitch and begin your double crochet, but don't complete it. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops only. Then you're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and pull your yarn through. Then you'll have four loops on your hook. Then you'll yarn over, pull through two loops. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's a two together, double crochet two together stitch. And then now you'll just carry on and do your regular double crochet into the top loop of each stitch as before for the rest of this round. 
and then in the third to last stitch or fourth to last stitch we'll do another decrease all right so coming to the end of round 16 there's four stitches left so we'll work that double crochet two together again so yarn over go into the one stitch bring the yarn through yarn over and just complete half that double crochet then yarn over go into the next stitch bring your yarn through you'll have four loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops yarn over and pull through three and then I have two stitches left so just do a regular double crochet there and now we're going to start the top ribbing and unfortunately I'm into the darkest part of the yarn of this ball so just join this yarn around as before with a slip stitch and I'll be talking you through this so even though the yarn is really dark um, it will make sense and of course there's the written pattern in the blog post below that you can refer to so that's the uh, leg warmer part done and I brought the camera in a bit closer so you can see this a bit better so now we're going to do the ribbing so what you'll do is you'll chain four or whatever number of chains you used for your base ribbing so you maybe used five or six but we used four so chain four and then chain one for your turning chain and you can turn your work sideways and this is a little bit awkward so skip your turning chain and into the top loop of the next chain and you'll work work a single crochet and then do a single crochet into the top loop of each chain until you get to the bottom and so you'll have four double crochets or single crochets at the end of this chain just like that and then what you have is the the joining stitch that you chained up onto you'll skip the first stitch and into the second stitch here we're going to slip stitch under both loops of that stitch so go under both loops of the second stitch and do a slip stitch then turn your work this way and then this is a little bit tricky you'll take your tail end and tuck that in behind your hook and hold it in behind and you'll find the top loop of that first single crochet and put your hook through there and do a single crochet and then you'll do a single crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way along and you'll have four single crochets or whatever number you started with depending on what your beginning chain was and then chain one and turn your work and then skip the turning chain and going into the top loop of the first stitch you'll do a single crochet and single crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way down and you'll have four single crochets all together and then you'll skip a stitch skip that first stitch and into the second stitch going under both loops you'll do a slip stitch turn your work bring your tail up in behind your hook a little tricky to hold there and then do a single crochet into the top loop of that first single crochet from the previous row and doing a single crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way down and I know this is dark but hopefully what I'm saying will make sense so chain one and turn your work so you're going to do that all the way along all the way around the top of your leg warmers doing four single crochets along uh, the ribbing and as you get to the base of the ribbing you're going to skip a stitch and slip stitch into the second stitch to anchor that down and then turn your work put the yarn in behind your work and work back way up 
work your way back up that ribbing. So go ahead and do that all the way along until you get to the other side of the uh, leg warmers and I'll see you there. I can't believe I'm in the darkest part of this yarn. I do apologize for this, but that's just the way the self-striping yarn worked out. So I've completed my ribbing all the way around and I've come to the end here. And what I've done is I've slip stitched into the last stitch. And then what we have here is this is that joining um, stitch from the previous round and we haven't been crocheting into that, but you can see here that there's still a little bit of a gap. Now you may have one stitch left before the end of this round. So whether you come into this last stitch and have this slip stitch or come into the skip stitch and have two left, I'd still do one more rib up and down and then you'll join in to this last stitch here for the final one. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So I've come down this side and I'm sorry, I know you can't really see that, but um, I have this joining stitch here and that's the one I'm going to slip stitch into for the very last slip stitch. There we go. And then you just wanna cut yourself a bit of a tail here because we're gonna use that to sew the cuff on and just pull that through and snug that up. And then you can just sew this piece up, but I'll show you on the other end where the yarn is lighter. So this is our beginning cuff piece. So you just take your tail end that you have and put your darning needle on and you're literally just going to stitch up the seam. And what I would do at the bottom at this end, just do a double stitch. And you can do that at the top end too. Do a double stitch for the top and um, where the dark blue was. So once um, you do that double stitch, you can just go ahead and do a basic whip stitch. And you're just picking up a stitch from each side of the band and just stitching that up going straight across and then you can just uh, darn in your tail end and if you want you can put a knot um, before you do this darning in uh, it's totally up to you uh, but I do always come back in the other direction to make sure it's a nice secure um, join or darning it, that in, I mean. And then just snip that off. And then, of course, repeat that on the top side as well. And then, of course, you're going to make two of these. And then I'll zoom out so you can see them better. And so here we go, they're all done. And this is how much yarn I have left at the end of the ball. So if you follow my pattern exactly, you'll have enough yarn. But if you're using a different yarn or you're making them bigger, you'll have to um, adjust the amount of yarn and have a little bit more. So I want wanted my colors to be offset. I didn't want them to match perfectly. So what I did was the first leg warmer, I worked from the inside of the ball and the second leg warmer I worked from the outside so the pattern went in the opposite direction. If you want to mat try to match up the striping you can do that if you like but I think they look pretty cool like this. But the other thing I want to note is you'll notice the seam at the back goes off on an angle. That's normal for working in the round. There is a trick to keep this more straight but it's a bit complicated and I just wanted to keep this beginner friendly. And the other thing that you can do with these leg warmers with this particular stitch pattern is you can turn them inside out. And when you turn them inside out the pattern is a little bit different and it's a very nice stitch as well. And what this does is then in the back, the seam along the back is a little bit more invisible in compared to this one here. It's just a little bit more invisible. So again, that's totally up to you. But these are just so much fun, super easy to make. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. We'll see you next time. Thank you.